Uh, we're here with Unker Bat, uh, who is working for Kasten by Beam. And so we're going to talk about cert management. Unker? Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, so again, my name is Omkar Bhatt. I'm an engineering manager at Kasten by Veeam. Very happy to be here uh, attending Cloud Native Rejects. Uh, thank you to the audience for being here, and many thanks to the organizers for organizing this great event. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how to manage certificates in a Kubernetes cluster using an open source project called Cert Manager. So before I dive into that, I'm going to give a little bit of background about why am I doing this talk today. Um, so at Kasten, I worked on a project where um, we had to support certificates signed by private certificate authorities um, with our product named K10. Um, so we do backup and disaster recovery in, in Kubernetes, and we needed to play well with such certificates. So at the time, I used OpenSSL to create keys, create certificate signing requests, and certificates themselves. Um, I used that certificate with a MinIO deployment for object storage uh, for testing purposes, for internal testing. But then eventually I learned about Cert Manager, and we've been using that for our certificate man management needs for MinIO, uh, private LDAP servers, and, and any endpoint you can think of that you want to keep private. So that's a background about how uh, I came about learning about Cert Manager and then using it. And so before diving further into Cert Manager, I'm going to go through a few <laughs> basics here um, and, and then um, explain about how Cert Manager helps us. So first of all, why do we need a certificate? Um, if you want end-to-end -end encryption from a client to server and back, um, and if you, if you are interested in using the secure form of HTTP called HTTPS, then, then you need certificates. And when you're talking about encryption, you need a, a client needs the server's public key in order to encrypt the data. And the server will then decrypt it using its private key. And, and so that's how you enable encryption. So now so the certificate has the server's public key. Uh, so that's another reason why you need a certificate for that communication and uh, authentication. So the client wants to know that the server it's talking to really controls that domain that the client is talking to. And a valid certificate helps prove that. And, and so that's another reason why you need a certificate. And so all of this is um, for the purpose of preventing man-in-the-middle attacks. So. If there's a bad actor that's trying to masquerade as the owner of a domain, um, certificates will help uh, prevent that. OK, so we know why we need a certificate, but how do you trust it? So that's where trusted third parties come into the picture. They're called certificate authorities, and I'll refer to them as CAs throughout most rest of the presentation. You have two types. There's a public CA. They're accessible on the internet. And some organizations prefer deploying this, their services internally only. You know, It's not exposed to the internet. And in such cases, you'll find private CAs, where the organization generates its own certificate authority and uses it for signing certificates for services in their internal network. Now, the CA signs a certificate with its private key, and the client verifies it using the CA's public key. So that's how the verification process happens. Now, with public CA's, what typically happens is if you, you, know, if you have a container or a machine um, that's talking to that endpoint, it's going to have a trust store that's loaded with all the well-known CA's that are available in the world. And, and so it can verify connections. But if you're using a private certificate signed by a private CA, you have to load that private CA certificate in your trust store. So that's a key difference between public and private CAs. So now that we've learned about why we need a certificate, how do we trust it, so then where do we use it? So if you are deploying a web service, 
that needs to serve HTTPS traffic, then you're go that's where you're going to use that certificate. When you deploy a web service, you know, for testing purposes, you can use port forwarding, you can use HTTP for testing, but if you're serving production traffic, you, you know, if you want to do HTTPS, um, you have to make sure you're, you're doing the right thing with your certificates and deploying the app with it. So how do I generate them? So obviously I've talked about CA in the last few slides. You, Let's Encrypt is an example of a certificate authority. You need an agent on the web server that can talk to such a certificate authority. And so Cert Manager is an example of that. And there's a common language that the two can understand in, for them to communicate. And um, that language is the ACME protocol. I'll dive into each one of these concepts in the next few slides. So starting with Let's Encrypt, it's a free automated and open certificate authority provided by the Internet Security Research Group. So the goal was to create a secure web, you know, a privacy respecting web. So it's a free service that lets you create certificates, renew them and revoke them. And so that's really awesome that it's a free service. And then comes Cert Manager. You know, it's a certificate controller in Kubernetes. It's capable of requesting certificates from public and private issuers. So they refer to it as issuers. What that means is a certificate authority. Um, the controller ensures validity of the certificates at regular intervals. And the important thing here is it renews them before expiration. And so that's really powerful. And so big news from a few days ago is the CNCF Technical Oversight Committee accepted CERT Manager as an incubating project. So a big round of applause for the whole CERT Manager team and maintainers. So next, the ACME protocol, that stands for Automated Certificate Management Environment, designed by the Internet Security Research Group, and then published as an RFC 8555. Um, it automates the communication between a client and server for the purposes of managing certificates. So what was that before ACME? It was a manual process. It was tedious, error prone. You know, you create a certificate, you deploy your server, and then you forget about it. And then you only react when there's an actual expiration. And I've, I've been through that. Um, also, and I see a lot of other people nodding their heads too. And if, if the expiration happens, you're, the next problem is you're trying to find the owner, like who, who did it, maybe they left the company. Um, so all of this exposes your service to downtime and exposes it to man in the middle attacks. And so that's where the ACME protocol is really powerful to prevent these problems. So the ACME protocol has a two-step process. Um, in the first step, the agent tries to prove to the CA that the web server indeed controls the domain. And then this, in the second step, the agent can request, renew, or revoke certificates. So we'll dive into the protocol into more detail before talking about Cert Manager. So step one, you have a web server on the left, and you have Let's Encrypt the CA, the CA on the right side. So the agent on the web server knocks on Let's Encrypt's door and says, hey, Let's Encrypt, I want to prove that my web server controls example.com. So Let's Encrypt then responds saying, sure, but you have to complete this challenge. And the challenge has two parts to it. It says, put the special value ED98 in a file named, say, 8303 at example.com. The second part of the challenge, at the bottom you see that it says, hey, here's a nonce. In this case, it's 9CF0B331. Sign this nonce with a private key. So the agent gets to the task of accepting this challenge and completing it. It puts that value ED98 in the file 8303. Let's encrypt queries that file, verifies that the values match. And, on, and then on the top part, it's the part of the challenge where it has to sign the nonce. So the agent signs it with a private key. 
gives let's encrypt its public key and so now the ca verifies the signature so once this challenge has been verified let's encrypt declares that this web server is definitely the one controlling example.com so at this point step 1 of the acme protocol is has succeeded in step 2 the agent can now request a certificate and let's encrypt will respond back with a valid certificate so these diagrams were directly taken from Let's Encrypt's own how-to page. Um, super useful. So next we go on to Cert Manager. Um, how do we deploy it? You can use Helm. You can use kubectl apply. There's a cert-manager.yaml file that the maintainers have themselves published in their GitHub repo. So once you apply it, it's going to create the CRDs that Cert Manager needs. It's also going to create the deployment services for deploying the Cert Manager controller. So for my demo that I'm going to show later, it's a recorded demo, I've used kubectl apply. And this is very specific to my demo. So in my environment, I used a GKE cluster, and I'm going to be using DNS validation, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So I need my GCP credentials stored in a Kubernetes secret so that Cert Manager can interact with Google's DNS service. And so I have two commands here. The first one is you want to create a key file for your IAM, Google IAM service account. And then you take that key file, store it in Kubernetes secret. And I'll talk a little more about this, how it's going to be used later. So next, we, let's look at how Cert Manager generates a certificate, or rather requests a certificate. There are, uh, and, and so at this point, we've talked about basics. We've talked about what a certificate is, how do you trust it, how does the Acme protocol work. So now we're diving into the Kubernetes world, where we're looking at how Cert Manager acts as an agent. So there are five Kubernetes resources I've listed here. The first two, which is the issuer and certificate, they're the ones that a client creates. So the client interacts with the controller through these two resources. But the remaining three, which is certificate request, the order, and the challenge, the life cycle of these are managed by a controller. A user typically doesn't create them or interacts with them. Sometimes you have to do that if you're troubleshooting problems. Um, but for the most part, it's managed by a controller. And there are two types of challenges, HTTP and DNS. So remember the Acme diagrams that we went through? Um, the whole validation flow there was an example of HTTP validation. In my demo, I'll show you how DNS validation is done. All right, so next I have a diagram that we'll uh, go through. It sort of shows you the sequence of events that take place when Cert Manager requests for a certificate. So first, the user, user creates an issuer resource, which represents the CA. And then they create a certificate uh, for certain domain names. So at this point, the controller kicks in. It sees that the user has requested something. Now, one of the things the controller creates is a temporary secret with a private key. It also creates a certificate request. So for anyone who's used OpenSSL, you, you, you remember creating certificate signing requests. So a similar CSR is going to be created and embedded inside this object. The private key is going to be used to sign that CSR. Right, And both of these objects refer to the issuer. So next, the controller creates an order. The order is responsible for managing one or more challenges. And um, once a challenge has been completed and verified, you'll finally have a Kubernetes secret created with the certificate in it. The private key from the temporary secret is going to be copied over to the final secret. And those are the two key pieces of information a application needs in order to start serving HTTPS traffic. So 
So DNS validation. Um, in order to do this, cert manager has to create a DNS record named underscore acme dash challenge. Once that's done, the CA will verify the contents of that record. And if it if it's successfully verified, that means um, the, the agent has proved that the web server is the controller of the domain. So uh, another form of validation, but instead of HTTP-based validation here, we're using DNS records. And the record gets cleaned up after the verification is done. So, okay, so here, here's a comparison of the two. Um, if you're running in an environment where you're okay exposing port 80 uh, to external traffic, then you can use HTTP validation. You, you know, you want your Let's Encrypt server to be able to talk into your network. But what if you're running a network where you don't want that exposed? That's where DNS validation can be useful. It's especially, DNS is especially useful when it's for domains, for websites that are private. The second point here is about multiple servers per domain. So let's say you're distributing your load across multiple servers for your domain. In the case of HTTP validation, that challenge file, remember the ED98 inside a special file, you have to have that in every server, but you don't have to do that in the case of DNS validation. And the last point here is about wildcard domains. You can request those only using DNS-based validation. All right, so this is my last slide before I dive into the demo. So this is now talking about how do you take a valid certificate and consume it into your application. So you can do that through a Kubernetes ingress. There are two ways to do that using an ingress. The first one is about uh, using annotations. So if you add an annotation such as cert-manager.io slash issuer, cert manager will detect it. It will do what we discussed in the previous slides, uh, the whole flow of creating certificates, requests, orders, and challenges will take place. And it will automatically update your ingress's YAML with a TLS section, which means the ingress is now capable of serving HTTPS traffic. So it's very nicely automated there. Um, for my demo, I'm using the second part here because I've manually created the certificate myself just for illustrative purposes. So I updated my ingress YAML manually to have a TLS section. So you could do either ways. The first one is actually the most convenient from an automation perspective. All right, so next I'm going to play a video that I recorded and talk through that. All right, so here I've already logged into a GKE cluster and I'm able to list the namespaces there. You'll see I have cert manager installed in the cert-manager namespace. The application that I'm going to be using is a simple Hello World application that's in the namespace named app-staging here. So these are just files I've created to help me with the demo. I'm going to be showing what each one of them contain and um, also apply them. So first we'll start off with how did I create the application? I use kubectl create deployment. It's a, the deployment is named web and I use this image, uh, google dash samples slash hello app dot, hello app colon 1.0. It's a very simple app that will just return a hello world string when you query it. And it's installed in the app dash staging namespace. So we'll next run kubectl get to verify the deployment is ready. Once we verify that, I'll move on to talking, showing the Kubernetes service object for this service. So it's a service named web in the app dash staging namespace. It's listening on port 8080 and it's of type node port. So we'll use kubectl get to verify the service exists. So it's up and running, everything looks good. So far, so good. So the next one, let's look at the ingress. And I pre-created these 
because the ingress takes a little time in GKE clusters for the GKE load balancer to react to it. Uh, so I didn't want to apply it and wait here through the video. So it's already running. So here it's named web-ingress in the same namespace as the app. So here you'll see the TLS section points to the secret that contains the certificate. So that's where we'll eventually generate our certificate into. And the ingress is meant for the domain name, helloapp.dev.gke.casting.io. So this is going to show up in our certificate request. And the default backend is the web service that we just created in the previous step. So just confirming that the ingress is uh, already created you'll see that a public IP address has already been allocated to it. Okay, so the next step that I'm going to show is the command that I used for installing cert manager. As I said previously, I used kubectl apply. And next, I'll get all resources in the cert manager namespace. You'll see that there's a replica set, deployment, service, and pods. They're all up and running. So Cert Manager is available as a controller right now in this Kubernetes cluster for managing certificates. I'm also showing the custom resource definitions that have been installed here. So you'll see that they have a suffix with the Cert Manager name in them highlighted in red, and the various resources we have talked about in previous slides. All right, so in this next step, I'm showing uh, how I created the secret that contains my Google credentials, which is going to be used for interacting with Google's cloud DNS service. So I created a secret of type generic, and I've pointed it to a JSON file, which represents my Google credentials. So next, we're just confirming that the secret exists. And remember, this is in the app namespace, so it's namespace scoped. So with all that set up, we're finally going to a point where I'm not going to show something that's pre-created. I'm actually going to apply stuff now for the cert certificate request. So we'll start off with looking at the issuer resource. It's called let's encrypt dash staging. It's in the app namespace. So remember, this is a namespaced resource. You could use a cluster issuer if you wanted to, but for the demo, I've used a namespaced issuer. The server points to a staging URL. So Acme offers a staging URL as well as a production one. The staging one is ideal for testing purposes. The email is, is the email address where I'll get a notification when a certificate is about to expire. Now this private key secret reference is, is a reference to a secret that's gonna be generated after I create the issuer. So it will contain the private key that will be used for encrypting communication between cert manager and the let's encrypt server. And for solving the challenges, I've selected DNS-based validation. Cloud DNS refers to Google's cloud DNS service. And for that, I have to provide the project, the GCP project ID, and the reference to the secret that contains my GCP credentials. So this is how all of that ties in together with the issuer. So let's um, go ahead and apply that. So once this has been applied, uh, I'm going to first show that, remember I talked about a temporary secret that will contain a private key for signing the certificate signing requests. So that's, well, sorry, first, uh, I think I moved too fast. So first, this is the secret 
um, which is created after an issuer is created. So just confirming that that secret is present. It's called let's encrypt dash staging. Let's describe the issuer. And you'll see cert manager has updated it with a message saying the Acme account is registered with the server. Everything looks good from the point of view of creation of the issuer. So now we'll move on to um, the most anticipated part of the demo. We're going to create the certificate resource. It's called Hello App Search Staging in the app's namespace. The secret name refers to the secret where we're going to um, keep the certificate after it's generated. It refers to the issuer that we created in the previous step. And you'll see there are two DNS names being requested as part of this certificate. One, the first one is, is a wildcard domain, and the second one is not. So let's apply it. And at this point, I'm going to get the secrets in this app's namespace to show that, um, to show a temporary secret that's created with the private key. So you'll see it has a prefix of hello app search staging along with a random ID. It's a temporary secret. Let's describe the certificate to see the events that are taking place by the as a result of the controller acting on it. You'll see two messages. One is about the temporary secret, and the other one is about creating the certificate request resource. So you'll see a chain of events occur as we keep running kubectl describe now. So let's do a kubectl describe of the certificate request this time. And you'll see there are uh, there's an event section, there's an order created under the reason column, and then there's an order pending. So it's still working on uh, the certificate request at this point. And remember that an order manages one or more challenges. So since there were two DNS names in my certificate resource, you're going to see one challenge per DNS name. And so that's what we are doing next. Well, we're describing the order which shows the two challenges. So now let's describe the challenges and look at what's their status as of now. Um, at this point, Cert Manager and Let's Encrypt are working on validating, doing DNS validation. So you'll see the first challenge that I am um, displaying over here right now. It shows wildcard colon true. So this is the challenge corresponding to the wildcard domain. And you'll see the message at the bottom that says domain hello app.dev.gk.casting.io is verified with DNS validation. So this challenge is complete. So let's go ahead and describe the last remaining challenge. So it's still work in progress. You'll see that the age of, of the event is 38 seconds. Um, it's going to cross at least the one minute mark. And, and so now you see why I had uh, the, this in my title. I mentioned um, generating certificates in minutes and not in seconds. So we're almost at the one minute mark now. Um, once, once this is validated, now you'll notice that the next time I run it, it's going to say not found. And so don't panic, everything's OK. Because what's really happened is the validation was successful. The controller went ahead and cleaned up the challenges. Um, it's going to clean up the order and certificate request as well. So all of this is good news at this point. So it says not found. And so now let's go up the chain of events. Let's describe the original certificate resource. And so boom, at the end of this, you see the message that says the certificate has been successfully issued. So this is where we wanted to get to. 
Let's list the secrets in the app's namespace now and look for the one that contains the certificate. So I'm going to use dash o yaml to dump the contents of that secret. And there are two key fields that I want to show here. So as I scroll up, I'm basically looking for the field named tls.cert, which represents the certificate. And then there's tls.key, which is the private key copied from the temporary secret into the final secret. All right, so we have generated the certificate. Um, what, what I'm going to show next is we're going to run curl against those domain names to see if the certificate is valid or not. So uh, just, just for quick access, I stored the URL inside a file here. Um, so I'm copying that. I'm going to run curl. Uh, but notice I'm using the dash k flag. So th and, and, and things are working at this point. Um, that was deliberate. The dash k flag represents ins an insecure flag. It, it essentially disables certificate verification. Let's see what happens if I remove the dash k flag here. Oops, it says curl wasn't able to verify the legitimacy of the server. And that makes sense because remember in my issuer, I used a staging URL of Acme, which is only meant for testing purposes. It's not a well-known CA. It's not uh, a CA where you'll find it in all of the client's trust stores. So this is expected. And just to further prove that fact, I'll run curl with the dash V flag, which is going to emit some more debug logs here. And you'll see that I'm highlighting the line that clearly says there's an unknown CA involved in this communication. All right, so, but uh, I don't want to stop the demo here. I want to show a curl command where I don't have to show the, use the dash K flag and it just works with the URL. So luckily for you, I've already created another application I've ran it with a production URL. And so I'm just going to quickly show that there's another namespace called app-production instead of app-staging. So I'm going to run get deployments in that production namespace, just verifying that the web service is running. And let's describe the certificate that was generated in this production namespace. Right? And you'll notice here that cert manager has updated a message saying the certificate is up to date and not expired. So this is cert manager doing the work in the background for you, frequently checking if the certificate is valid. And if not, it's going to send you an email within a certain buffer. So that I think the default is if it's within 30 days of expiration, it will notify you. So again, I, here's the production URL. So it's hello app prod.dev.gke.casting.io. And I'm going to compare that URL so that it's easier for you to visualize it. So I, I'm just dumping the staging URL as well here. So the staging one has hello app.dev and the production one has hello app prod.dev. So now, so I curled against the production endpoint. I didn't have to provide the dash K flag um, and it prints hello world. I'm also now the, the final step here is I'm listing the contents of a directory called slash etc SSL certs. Now for my container here, I'm running within a container. Actually this whole, this whole demo was within a container. This the etsy SSL search directly represents the SSL trust store. And this trust store has all the well-known CAs that exist out, out, out there in, in the world. Um, and, and so that's the reason the, com the connection to the Hello App web service was successful because the service had a valid certificate signed by Let's Say Encrypt, which is a well-known CA. And that brings me to the uh, end. I think I have a couple more minutes, so I'll talk about troubleshooting. So coincidentally, when I was working on preparing this demo, there was an outage in the staging server. 
So when I actually created a certificate request, I had to run kubectl get and describe on all these resources to like figure out what happened. And and so that there was a very I don't have that message here, but there was a very clear message that said you know there's there may be downtime. There was a special URL to go look at you know what's happening with those services, and that's how I found out the staging URL was down. Um, so super useful. Very it was very easy for me to debug. The second uh, example for troubleshooting that I have is I had an incorrect email ID something at example.com because of whatever template I was using. And, and that was very easy to debug as well. It clearly told me, you know, you need to give a valid email while requesting a certificate. So those are two examples of troubleshooting that I can give you. But other than that, I'm open to questions. Yeah. Please go. Um, so cert manager actually has the ability to renew it for you, and that's the whole point of using cert manager that you don't have to get involved, um, and and so it will notify you, but it can do that on its own. Um, the story with third party certificates? Yeah, I think uh, it's perhaps like where I worked was, it was a very manual, but we used a lot of widgets from third parties, and basically you would have to just get certificates from them and apply them manually or you know, do them with Ansible or something, and it was common. So I'm curious, like, what, maybe uh, I just don't understand the concept of certificates. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I, I've worked with multiple customers who've had, who've had deployments in their internal networks. Another example that I haven't talked about here is an LDAP server, for example. So they want to install our product K10. They want authentication. You know, initially when they test, they use basic authentication, but when it times to deploy when it when it's time to deploy it in production, they want us to work well with their internal LDAP server, for example. So that's when they involve their security team and their security team gives the CA certificate that was used to sign the certificate used for deploying the LDAP server. So the security team sends them an email, gives them a CA certificate and attaches it or whatever means they share it with this DevOps team. And then they use that CA to put it in their trust store when, when deploying the app. In, in the case of K10, so we, our primary way of deploying is a Helm chart. So they can give the certificate to us through a Kubernetes secret. And we'll let all of our containers have this special certificate, the private CA, in every container's trust store. So, so that's, that's been very common. It's the, we've seen this for MinIO as an object storage. So any endpoint that's private, you usually have to like follow this workflow. Any other questions? Great, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you.